Hello, I'm Mark Kennedy from the Ottawa Citizen. I'm here with Katie O'Malley. We're nearing the end of the federal election campaign, quite the marathon, a 78-day campaign. Many issues, everything from the economy, Syrian refugees, NECAB, Trans-Pacific Partnership, deficits, childcare, taxes, and infrastructure spending. Katie, looking back on it, what do you make of the campaign? Well, I think that we were expecting the long campaign to really change the dynamic, and I really think it did. When you think back to sort of August when the writ first dropped and we were first getting started, I can barely remember what was happening then, to be honest. Like, it, 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 there was a campaign, they were out there, but we've had so much time pass. I think that when we eventually look back at this election and figure out why things happened the way they did, the, the, that, that sheer, uh, the sheer marathon quality of this election definitely, I think, played a role. Now, as we head into the final weekend, it looks as though the polls are showing the Liberals are ahead. Lord knows if that means it's a victory, but it shows they're ahead. And, but also in the dying days, they have their own little controversy to deal with, and that is the resignation of their co-chair. Dad Gagne. What do you make of that? What happened and will it impact the Liberal vote? Well, this is, of course, the uh, the co-chair who sent a letter apparently responding to a request from his friends at TransCanada explaining, to be fair, in extremely general terms, kind of how they should go about lobbying the next government, whoever it should be, on the Energy East project. But for obvious reasons, the optics of this are just horrific, having someone who's sort of a co-chair of the campaign in a situ... Uh, providing advice like that is just, you know, it is wildly inappropriate. I think... If you're going to be hit by an ethics scandal involving a senior player in your campaign uh, three days or four days before an election, probably the Liberals handled it about as well as you can. And Stephen Harper, as we head into the campaign, in, in the, into the final days of the campaign, it looks as though the Ford brothers will be out again for the second time in a few days at a rally, at an event. What do you make of that? I find this just bizarre, I have to say. It, it really feels like a decision that was made, I don't know, by the party or the Fords or some sort of combination of the two. I don't know, it just it sort of smacks of this desperation, which is kind of not the message you want to be sending as you're closing out your campaign. In fairness, I mean, we have no idea what's actually going to happen in the GTA. This could turn out to be a brilliant move, and it'll bring in a, a lot of voters who otherwise wouldn't have voted Conservative, but at the moment it just seems like a head-scratcher. Okay, now let's not forget about Tom Mulcair and the NDP, because at the start of the campaign, they were the story. People were expecting the possibility of the first NDP government federally in Canadian history, and it doesn't look as though that's about to happen. What went wrong, and how can they recover some of that vote in the next two or three days? You know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't actually know what went wrong. We can point to a couple of things, but it really just seems as though once the election again started rolling, and particularly when we hit that uh, that September, when people kind of started tuning in, the NDP just started to cruise downwards. You can't really point to one issue or one policy or one you know event that happened. I will say that I think that had he performed better in the debates, we might be having a very different conversation right now. Okay, so that's that was campaign 2015. Don't forget to go out and vote on Monday. And certainly come back to us at the Ottawa Citizen. We'll be having full campaign coverage on election night and the days after that.